Hello everyone, welcome to Ansgar Church's online service for Sunday, April 26th. We hope you are all well and staying healthy, and we sincerely hope that soon we will be seeing you at Ansgar Danish Lutheran Church of Edmonton. The Psalmist writes, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Here ends the reading.
The epistle is written in the letter to the Hebrews. Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Here ends the reading. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Noget vær mere, og fred for Gud vor far og Herren Jesus Christus. Lad os alle bede. Let us all pray. Lord our God, Heavenly Father, you who let your own son bow deeply to the ground, only to raise the corrupted world with him, grant your congregation here on earth your everlasting joy, and keep those whom you have saved from falling into infinite death, but let them all live and breathe in your eternal bliss. For your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one true God, forever and ever. Amen. This Holy Gospel for the second Sunday after Easter, Misericordia Sunday, is written by John the Evangelist. Then came the festival of dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was in the temple courts, walking in Solomon's colonnade. The Jews who were there gathered around him, saying, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify about me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. Amen. How comforting it is to hear and to believe the words of the psalmist that we heard in the beginning. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He guides me along the right paths, and surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I wish for all of you that whatever happens to you, and wherever you are in life, may these words of consolation and solace stay with you now, and to the very end. In the Gospel, Jesus brings these words of the words of love from God, brings them to this earth by promising us his life, his eternal life in himself. Jesus says, no, it's not that complicated. Listen, listen to my voice. Follow me and you shall never perish. The promise God gave in the psalm to dwell, that we shall dwell in his house forever, is fulfilled in Jesus Christ. And if you believe this, comfort and consolation is always right at hand. God's solace is here in this world available to us by Jesus Christ in his atonement with this world that he found for us on the cross. And we, when all this is done for us, we just have to listen. 
and follow. And then no one should be able to snatch any of us out of God's hands, the hands of Jesus Christ. Sounds simple, right? It should be easy for us, for any of us, to do this, right? There are no efforts in, from our side, in, in, side involved in this. And just listening to the voice of the Good Shepherd, the voice of the Good Shepherd who comforts us so that we shall not want. And in the same way, there are really no restrictions for any of us to get access to listen to this voice, to his voice. We may not hear it, but we do have ears to hear and listen, don't we? And we have eyes to read. No, it's not complicated at all. Nevertheless, it is not always easy for us to listen to the voice. I know that. And you know that too, I'm sure. But why is it so? Why is it so difficult just to listen? I can't tell you if I just look at my own heart and scrutinize that. But I have the gospel. I have the gospel of today. And I hope and I think that this gospel will give us a hint. Maybe in how some people, the Jews, in today's gospel, are relating to Jesus. We have them asking Jesus, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you're the Messiah, tell us plainly. If you know, if you knew, if you know, or you well think you do, the Gospels, or the Gospel of John in this case, well, you may, with me, ask, well, hey, didn't, they, didn't Jesus tell them all the time who he was? Are they deaf? Well, in a way, they, I think they are. Well, they might hear, but they are not listening. But I guess... We may be deaf too, or at least not listening most of the time. It seems to me, at least, as if we ourselves, we don't have patience. We don't have time to wait for enlightenment and true carry clarification to come to us. I think we today also, most of us at least, are asking Jesus the same questions as the Jews did almost 2,000 years ago. How long will you keep us in suspense? If you're Messiah, if you're the Christ, the anointed one, why don't you just tell us, right, you know, straight out, and do something so we will understand and believe? But in these special times that we are going through right now, maybe it's the question, how long will you keep us in this suspense that are lying, you know, right out in our mouth now? I'll try to back up this with a little fact check checking. Well, at least what I've experienced the last two weeks. Because I've been in contact with many in this con community. And in many ways, telephone, emails, you name it. And I also went with my wife and some of my sons and our church hand, Samsina, out, out into our oddly quiet city. We went out to deliver greetings and chocolate cakes to children in the congregation. And we also, on our way, knocked upon the front doors of other parishioners. Before I proceed my sermon, I must underline that we, that we always stayed in the prescribed social distance to each other. So don't be worried for me or for those who have visited, nor for yourself if I one day knock on your door. And if I haven't been around your house, I'm sorry, I would have laughed too. Call me any time. 
and maybe I will pop by for a front door visit at your house sooner than you think. Or I even mean, we don't meet each other at the front, at your front entrance. You must know, you should know, that I'm always available for any conversation you may need for your spiritual health. Don't hesitate to contact me in any way. Well, to continue the story about the, the visits, it was absolutely wonderful to see all of those I saw on, the, on our way around the city and see how happy everyone got by our short front door visits. Visits where we stayed at least six feet apart. But most of, the most amazing thing was that we all recognized mutually that we need, we need, we need each other. We need to connect in real life. No phone call and no social media, media can replace a good old fashioned visit face to face. And even though we stayed six feet apart. It was fantastic to meet so many of you. I also sensed among you a general feeling of restlessness. Or I do sense that every time I, I talk with you. How long shall we wait? How long will we keep be kept in suspense? I sense that many of us feel that we are missing out on life. We can't really come to terms with the weight, the suspense we are living in right now. And I hear the, the, the question again and again. When can we get back to real life? When can we meet at church? Why can't we just call it all off, live normal lives? and meet again regularly at church. Or at least, we, we ourselves, could we just, just for us, cut some corners in our lives regarding the social distance policy? Others are more ca concerned, more cautious, and they fear that the pandemic, the pandemic can hit Alberta and Edmonton any time. But still, still I sense the feeling of restlessness and fatigue even among those who are more cautious. Maybe it's the feeling of being in suspense. In suspense between two worlds. The feeling that we're living now in a no man's land or rather in a no timeline, or maybe both. It can be quite lonely. It feels empty to many of us right now. And in that way, many of us, or any of us, I guess, could be one of the Jews in today's gospel who asked Jesus, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, Tell us plainly. After all, we are tired, tired of waiting. It would be nice if someone, if Messiah, the Jesus Christ, if he dispersed this odd dream that we are living under right now, living in right now, dispersed it and woke us up to real life again. I guess we tend to live in the hope, in the hope, and maybe the dream you could say, that God and Jesus Christ, or the government, or the healthcare system, or whoever, will fix our small or big problems for us, and better sooner than later. We are restless beings, and maybe more restless than ever after just one and a half month in social distance. We are tempted to wish ourselves back to where we started. Back to normal, we might say, whatever that is. 
It sits right in our mouths, these questions. How long will you keep us in suspense? And if you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. As if the Messiah, the Son of God, or the government, or the healthcare system, or whoever, are supposed to fix all our problems. It would be nice, of course, but maybe not good for us. Maybe we have something to learn from our challenges in life, and therefore also from this current crisis. I surely believe that we do have something to learn. So instead of a quick fix, I wish and pray for all of us that we, through this crisis, as through any other challenge in life, that we will grow, grow and mature in faith and in spirit. It is quiet, quiet in our city right now, quiet in our lives. No backups, traffic, no hurry around or through the city. We got cleaner air, we can breathe more freely and we have more time, time to reflection. But even more importantly right now, we also have more time, more space, more quiet, more silence, you can almost say, to hear the voice of our Good Shepherd. We have the opportunity right now to hear his voice that brings comfort and care, to hear his promise of guidance and compassion in any of our life situations. Simply speaking, that we don't have to wait to live fully, even in COVID-19 times. It is already all we need, right here at hand, in the good voice of the Shepherd, our Lord Jesus Christ. No, I believe we don't have to live unfulfilled and unfree right now. And of course, yes, we are living in a kind of suspense but we can still live fully and freely in our faith. We may, well, we are prohibited from doing whatever we want. Now more than usual. But fulfillment, freedom may not lie in, in the ability to do whatever we want to do, but rather, may be rather, to do freely and fully what is right. And what is right to do is never the same. Of course not. We need time to reflect upon our own life and also to see what is right to do in our own situation. We need time. We tend to forget that. And I hope we become all by this Better, better to grant ourselves and each other time to reflect and contemplate, to pray and meditate. I hope we will become better through this crisis. But even more than reflection and self-scrutiny, I believe we need to listen. Listen, listen to each other. But most of all, listen to the voice of love that whispers through all creation. To the voice of comfort and compassion. To the voice of guidance and consolation. We need to hear the whispering voice of our Good Shepherd in Jesus Christ. It may not be loud and clear to us, but it is always there in our midst and reflected in the word of Jesus, who speaks to us, each one of us. And this voice that speaks to us, it says today to us that we are his. He calls us his sheep, which means that we are those who he takes care of, 
and talks to every day to our comfort and solace. And he says to you and me, listen to my voice. I know you. Follow me. I will give you my eternal life. With this voice of love whispering through your entire being, you shall not want. You shall live fully and freely safe in God's hands in whatever challenge you may face. God bless you. Take care of your spirit. Take care of each other. Take care of your neighbor in need. The voice of love whispers to all of us and speaks clearly in the word of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise and thanks and eternal glory be to you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, who was and is and shall be one trying God, most praised from beginning now and forevermore. Amen. Let us all pray. God, God of all people, let us hear your voice in Jesus Christ. Let us hear it as spoken to us even in times of trial and of restlessness. Let us understand in the, by this voice, through this voice, that you are our good shepherd. Our good shepherd who takes care of us and comfort us in any life situation. Send us your Holy Spirit so that we may believe your voice that whispers through all creation and speaks clearly to us in your word. We pray for all those who sit alone, for the sick and the poor, the homeless, who must feel lost more right now more than ever. We also pray for those who keep the health care system running, for all frontline workers. Yes, for all those who risk their lives to the common good. May the Spirit of God be with them and guide them through every charge. God, keep your church here, open and welcoming. Let your Holy Spirit live, live in our hearts, and let us hear the promise that we shall meet it again here, hopefully sooner than we, than we think, and one day in your kingdom. Give parliaments, governments, and all in authority and trusted persistent more wisdom and especially more sense of justice than we see today. Bless and keep your royal family, our royal families. Grant them and us your grace, peace, and blessing, and after a Christian life eternal bliss. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Finally, let us, with the Apostle, wish one another the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of us evermore. Peace be with you. Amen. Yeah, I